Sunday, November 13th. You are listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. Sunday, November 13th. You're listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. Well, we have a true winter weather pattern that has overtaken the Midwest over the past couple of days. This weather pattern, believe it or not, is going to continue for the next couple of weeks and only intensify, possibly bringing record cold into the Chicago area by the latter part of this week. That record cold is dependent upon whether snowfall accumulation could make it into our area. And then Friday night, we would have to see if the clouds could clear. If those two things could happen and we have light winds, temperatures will be dropping into the single digits here in Chicago, especially the suburbs. I don't know what the record low is for that date. This would be the uh, date for Saturday, but it's certainly going to be a close call if those things should happen. Uh, Right now, we have numerous low pressure systems which are forecasted to move through the Chicago area along with lake enhancement by at least the latter two. Low pressure, each one is going to have precipitation falling as snow. We have not seen snowfall accumulation yet this year for Chicago. So this is going to be the very first snowfall of the season. That's coming in on Monday night after midnight snow. Snowfall accumulation, if you look at the models, looks to be light. But the National Weather Service informs us that there could be a heavier snow shower, especially around rush hour on Tuesday. And there could even be some snowfall accumulation, especially away from the heat urban island effect of Chicago. System number two. Now, the system number one is coming in from the south, from the southwest. System number two is coming in from the northwest. There's a lot of moisture to work with initially, uh, not much moisture, but then the as the uh, atmosphere really uh, saturates itself, we really start to see continuous snow showers. And if not snow showers, even snow flurries or snow flurries, even the word even is actually going on, even when there's not really much forcing going on. There's not much of a low pressure system, but snow flurries should be falling nonetheless. We have our lake enhancement for system number two and system number three. There could be some serious heavier snow in the area for one of these systems, especially the latter two, for areas further inland. The deal is the lake water temperatures are up here in the Chicago area, and that's going to intensify the lake effect snow. But at the same time, it's just too warm. So some of the precipitation might be changing over to rain for areas near the lake. For right now, the Chicago area can probably expect not too much, probably about one to two inches from system number one and system number two, probably one to two inches total, probably, but snow squalls are possible. It's going to be Wednesday afternoon, snow squall potential Wednesday afternoon, uh, surface temperatures might be above freezing during that time. But the snow showers themselves could cause the temperatures to drop and probably will drop to below freezing. So we have lake effect snow showers possible Tuesday afternoon through Wednesday morning. We have Monday night, Tuesday snow in our area. And we have Wednesday afternoon snow squalls. A very impressive cold front moves through later in the day on Thursday. And there could be some heavier snow showers associated with the front. Now the GFS model does not show an additional front for Sunday, but the European computer model does. European computer model has a reinforcing shot of cold air for the weekend. So many systems to watch out for over here. Some of them include the lake effect enhancement, especially 
uh, Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday night, and that polar front that moves through bringing perhaps record cold. Winter weather pattern for this week, we have temperatures dropping, high temperatures in the 30s, low temperatures in the teens and 20s for most of the week. But we will have some days where perhaps temperatures may hit 40 degrees in parts of our area, especially Monday before the first snow. And then the very cold air comes in for Friday. Thank you for listening. I wish everyone a great week. Welcome to the computer model part of this weather podcast. We're going to go over all five computer models in just one moment. The following is for Lincolnwood, Illinois. We're going to be reaching the lowest barometric pressure of 30.33 happening around now, 8 p.m. Clouds start to move in uh, later on. Uh, the barometric pressure rises slightly reaching 30.39 towards morning. We have those high clouds for tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., but sunshine nonetheless. Despite the high clouds, the sun's going to shine right through those high clouds. Uh, we have, uh, by two, by 1 o'clock p.m., uh, we have some lower clouds, which could block out some of the sun, call it for partly sunny skies. This is the European computer model. Uh, again, 2 p.m., 3 p.m., Continued a gradual increase in clouds. Barometric pressure goes down to 30.32. Not bad at all at 3 o'clock p.m. Winds throughout the day tomorrow from the southeast in the morning, but quite light. Winds becoming southwest during the afternoon. Dew points will be rising through the day. Skies become cloudy by about 4 p.m. Temperatures go up into the upper 30s. European computer model for Lincolnwood, Illinois, has a high temperature reaching 39 degrees for tomorrow. Peak winds occur around 8 p.m., 12 miles per hour. Highest wind gusts to 19 miles per hour. Pressure reaches its peak later on tomorrow night at about 11 o'clock p.m. Skies are cloudy from 2 a.m. onward, and then they lower and they thicken, and we finally have precipitation occurring in the Lincolnwood, Illinois area. Lincolnwood, this is Westridge. This is officially West Rogers Park, but I think really there's a different weather station that's more accurate for West Rogers Park. Temperatures with rain and snow, um, according to the European computer model, by 5 a.m. Tuesday morning, we should have snow in our area. And uh, the snow will continue, light snow, about a tenth of an inch of snowfall accumulation from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Continued one-tenth of an inch per hour. Snow continues 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and 11 a.m. Two-tenths of an inch of snow accumulates 10 a.m. We have 11 a.m. The European computer model has the precipitation turning over to rain. This is right along the lakefront and dew points are going to be 33 degrees. The wet bulb temperature also will probably be uh, around 32 or higher. We have cloudy skies happening according to the European computer model. This is right along the lakefront. This is uh, Lincolnwood, Illinois, but it is right around uh, along the lakefront on the west. Uh, Tuesday afternoon, and then we have precipitation returning into the area. Uh, the winds become southeast. Winds really are uh, reach their peak 10 a.m. on Tuesday, with gusts to 20 miles an hour. And by winds start to die down Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday evening, precipitation moves back into the area. European computer model has our temperatures up at 39 degrees, which would cause the precipitation to be falling as rain. Uh, we're going to look at the National Weather Service in a moment because they are forecasting snow. So uh, let's just, uh, we're going to do that soon. But 5 p.m., we have a continuation of the rain. It finally does change over to a mixture of rain and snow by 6 o'clock p.m., says the European computer. 
computer model, 36 degrees, dew points 34 degrees, and we do have the winds finally becoming northeast by 7 p.m. That's when we start to get the lake enhancement. Uh, the National Weather Service it d does point out, we're going to look at it soon, that the, uh, despite the really low winds, the it's there's uh, stuff going on in the upper atmosphere that we're going to see the snow well inland. Let's uh, take a look at that soon. But we have temperatures 34 degrees, and at this point, the snow starts to accumulate about two-tenths of an inch an hour from 8 p.m., uh, 9 p.m., we have t 10 p.m., and we have 11 p.m. Those winds are shifting, becoming northwest. Temperatures, according to the European model, are going up again by 11 o'clock p.m., and that precipitation changes back over to rain. That's 11 p.m., uh, and then we go into Wednesday morning. Precipitation ends for midnight and 1 a.m., starts up again 2 a.m., as a rain-snow mix, and we have uh, the precipitation accumulating about a tenth of an inch an hour of snow, a tenth of an inch an hour of rain. Uh, but the precipitations generally rain, according to the European computer model. And by 6 a.m., the precipitation stops. And then the sun starts to come out around 7 a.m. Uh, we go into Wednesday. We have the winds pick up out of the northwest. 10 a.m. they reach their peak at 13 miles an hour, but 5 p.m. they reach their peak again, winds out of the west, and that's when system number three comes by. We have the barometric pressure reaches its uh, peak in the lowest barometric pressure. It's going to be 30.1, occurring 2 p.m. on Wednesday. The barometric pressure starts to rise slightly after that to 30.13. That happens around 11 p.m. on Thursday. So we have the Wednesday, 5 p.m., temperature 35 degrees. We have some super minor precipitation moving through, about a tenth of an inch, if even that, per hour from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. It might even start a little bit before 5 p.m., but 4 p.m. we're dry, and then after 8 p.m. it may continue, but by 9 p.m. we already have the moon. The moon will be coming out by 9 p.m., but around after midnight, especially 2 a.m. onwards, those winds really start to pick up, pick up out of the west. They really do start to pick up. Uh, and, uh, you know, throughout Thursday morning, we have cloudy skies. An area of precipitation moves through uh, sometime Thursday afternoon, producing another tenth of an inch of snowfall. And the temperatures start to get really cold. We have winds uh, coming out of the west. 18 miles an hour gusting to 29 those gusts to 29 continue into thursday evening and we continue uh, with winds around 20 miles per hour for friday morning as well so i would think the front according to the european computer model is probably moving through early thursday probably Thursday afternoon that's probably when we're going to be right along the front there's reason to believe that we could see a snow squall then but we have to see again from the National Weather Service to see what's going on over there that's the European computer model Friday we have ourselves under clear skies by Friday afternoon very cold temperature 26 degrees for the high Winds out of the west, slightly southwest, 18 miles an hour at the time, with gusts to 32 miles per hour. Uh, we're getting ready for quite a cold night Friday night, but we're not up to that at the moment. Let's go ahead and discuss the next computer model. Here we are, we're going to take a look at the GFS computer model. We have the barometric pressure going up, reaching its peak at 3 a.m. tonight at 30.38. Cloudy skies take over for tonight, says the GFS. Uh, we're going to see temperatures drop overnight, dropping into the mid-30s, 34 degrees. This is, uh, you know, winds out of the west, southwest, very light. Winds becoming southeast as we go through the day tomorrow. GFS computer model has slightly warmer temperatures for our area than the European computer model, but up by about one degree. High temperature tomorrow near 40 degrees. Lots of clouds in the area starting by about 1 o'clock p.m. But those clouds really start to increase, it become thicker by about 5 o'clock p.m. And But the clouds really thicken up when we head towards Tuesday morning, 
6 a.m. The GFS computer model has our area right here in Lincolnwood, Westridge, Lincolnwood, Illinois. Once again, we have borderline temperatures and it has our area too close to the lake. Winds are right off the lake and has our area of as precipitation falling as rain. Again, the National Weather Service, we're going to come up to that. This is just a computer model. Expert forecasters are forecasting snow. We're going to look more into that. But the computer model, both the European and the GFS, forecasting rain. Uh, that that uh, And uh, the rain, very minor rain, a light rain. The rain uh, continues throughout the day. Tuesday, a little bit of a break in the rain, maybe late morning. 10 a.m., maybe around 1 p.m., a break in the rain, but 2 p.m., that precipitation continues. It's light stuff. It's light stuff. Now, it does show snowfall accumulation. So, uh, somewhere along the line, there looks like we're talking about not even a tenth. The snowfall accumulation, the GFS, is uh, super minor stuff. You know, not even a tenth of an inch because much of it will be falling as rain we have the precipitation continuing the winds are out of the east but they become northeast tuesday evening and then become north and then northwest by wednesday morning 1 a.m we have northwest winds temperatures remain in the mid 30s and then temperatures go up into the, the rain continues very light rain but the rain continues throughout the day wednesday temperatures remain in the mid 30s and we have our you know the barometric pressure drops 30.06 is the lowest we're going to get wednesday afternoon the pressure starts rising again by thursday 3 a.m even by 1 a.m even by midnight we're at 30.09 not too bad for pressure drops Uh, we have the, the winds thursday late morning thick clouds but this thing doesn't show any precipitation the temperatures do start to get quite cold in the gfs computer model you really see a solid front moving through especially especially let's say after 4 a.m or so uh, we start to the temperatures finally start to drop and temperatures are just dropping. They start off Thursday morning in the low 30s. The temperatures drop. You know, they stay in the low 30s really the whole day. We start dropping into the upper 20s Thursday night. And then by Friday morning, we're headed from an overnight low with cloudy skies and windy. That's going to prevent those temperatures from getting too low. Temperatures drop into the low 20s. And we go for an afternoon high on Friday, 27 degrees. Very similar to the European computer model uh, where gusts at 8, 20 miles an hour, winds out of the west at 15 miles per hour. And let's take a look at the next model. This is a very high resolution model. It's a North American mesoscale model. It only covers Monday and Tuesday. So we have not much going on over here. But tonight we have clouds Partly cloudy skies, overnight low dropping to about 30 degrees. Sun comes out for tomorrow. We have the cloudy skies come in around 1 p.m. Clouds thicken throughout the afternoon. Afternoon high near 38 degrees. We have southwest winds, especially uh, winds right off the lake, really east, not southwest. East winds, especially tomorrow evening. Precipitation starts at 7 a.m., this model also showing rain for our area, four hundredths of an inch of rain, no snowfall at all, according to the North American Mesoscale model. We have temperatures between 35 and 38 degrees throughout this precipitation event, with a break from a, a, a one to three hour break in the morning. Precipitation becomes heaviest around nine o'clock p.m. Tuesday night very saturated atmosphere in fact the relative humidity 100 percent at that time the winds become out of the north we gradually become northeast especially four o'clock p.m uh in in six o'clock p.m onward we have more of a northerly component to the wind and 
the rain just continues. We only go up to midnight Wednesday, and then the North American mesoscale model comes to an end. Uh, the high resolution rapid refresh model, taking a look at that for the West Ridge, which is considered uh, West Rogers Park, but I do want to take a look at actually Northbrook in uh, very soon. We have the high resolution rapid refresh model uh, taking us for tonight cloudy skies, overnight low 28 degrees. Temperatures go up uh, to 38 degrees tomorrow, and the precipitation, according to the high resolution rapid refresh, also starts off as rain. Winds are right off the lake, 7 a.m. Rain Tuesday, temperatures 36 to 38 degrees throughout this event, and that takes us through through 6 p.m. Tuesday, and that's all the high resolution that Profesh has to offer us. Um, let's go on now to the uh, to the icon. The icon is the uh, German model. Tonight we see temperatures dropping to uh, 32 degrees. Sunny skies tomorrow. High temperatures becoming cloudy by one by two o'clock p.m. Highs in the upper 30s, 39 degrees. Precipitation starts around 7 a.m. in the form of rain, but it looks like apparently evaporative cooling will take place as temperatures drop and precipitation will be falling as snow. As a mixture of rain and snow, says the German model, the icon, this is the probably the most significant uh, of the uh, rain-snow mixtures. Uh, rain and snow continues from 8 a.m. throughout the entire day a mixture of rain and snow. Uh, it, precipitation ends sometime between 6 and 7 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday. We go for an overnight low uh, Wednesday night, you know, 35 degrees. And the next band of precipitation comes in 2 p.m. Wednesday afternoon, maybe a little bit before. And we start to see some uh, snowfall accumulation starts as the sun starts to set around 4 p.m. Wednesday afternoon, temperatures drop 34, 35 degrees. We still have temperatures above freezing. Going for an overnight low, Thursday night, Thursday we have dropping temperatures through the day. 9 o'clock a.m. temperature 20, well, 6 a.m. 27 degrees, 9 a.m. 26 degrees. Temperatures rise back up to 30 degrees in the next area of snow comes in 6 p.m. Thursday and 9 p.m. we have some snowfall about three tenths of an inch of snow for then and this only goes up to Friday at noon and that's about it let's quickly look at Northbrook Illinois Overnight lows tonight dropping to around uh, 29 degrees, 28 degrees tonight. Sunshine tomorrow, high clouds in the morning. Clouds come in in the afternoon. They thicken around 3 p.m. We have high temperatures tomorrow, 39 degrees. Overnight low tomorrow night, temperatures dropping to 35 degrees by around 1 a.m. And then they start rising after that. A rain-snow mixture comes in for 5 a.m. onward, perhaps even a little bit before 5 a.m., Temperatures between 36 to 37 degrees, but some minor snowfall accumulations of around a tenth of an inch per hour uh, during the early morning hours on Tuesday. Precipitation then changes over to rain starting around 11 a.m., maybe even after 10 a.m. at some point, and continues. And 6 p.m., we change back to snow. Temperatures remain above freezing during the entire event, and precipitation ends around 3 a.m. on Wednesday. We have... Uh, the next chance of precipitation comes Wednesday evening around 5 p.m., two-tenths of an inch, and then uh, maybe a little bit more. We have overnight lows dropping down to about 29 degrees Thursday morning, tw 29 by 1 a.m., and then temperatures rise to 30 by 6 a.m., drop to 29 by 9 a.m., High temperature Thursday, 32 degrees. We drop down to 28 by 6 p.m. Overnight low in Northbrook going down to 19 degrees for Thursday night. This is the European computer model. 
and we have temperatures we have temperatures for an afternoon high Friday of 25 degrees we will now be discussing the National Weather Service part of this program through Monday, here's the area forecast discussion, National Weather Service, 5.20 p.m. Central Standard Time. Only forecast concerns are the low temperatures tonight. Dew points are in the mid-teens across much of the area this afternoon, and little change is expected tonight or even on Monday. High pressure will move across the area tonight with light and variable or calm winds for much of the area. The only uncertainty is the current cloud cover, which is expected to scatter out this evening, but confidence is low, and some amount of stratus is possible tonight, along with increasing high clouds. Clouds. Guidance lows are in the mid to upper teens in the cool locations, and these are certainly possible given the setup. But given the low confidence for cloud cover, I've held low temperatures in the low 20s for most of the area. Increasing mid clouds on Monday may keep much of the area mostly cloudy, especially northwest Illinois. But with the warming air mass and light southeasterly winds, high temps may still warm into the low 40s for most of the area. Now, here's the most interesting part the long term forecast discussion issued at 2.33 p.m. Central Standard Time, <coughs> excuse me, Sunday, November 13th, 2022, Monday night through Sunday. Monday night into Tuesday morning, a vigorous southern shortwave trough currently over the southwestern U.S. will pivot east and then northeast around an amplifying northern stream shortwave trough. As this shortwave trough lifts northeast across the mid-Mississippi Valley Monday night and into the eastern Great Lakes on Tuesday, look for an area of snow to spread northeast across the forecast area after midnight Monday night and continuing through the morning rush hour Tuesday. Shortwave is expected to be weakening and gradually shearing out as it moves across the region. Strong as ascent is generally prog to be above the prime dent dendritic growth zone and surface temps initially could be a bit above freezing. However, with some guidance depicting transient mid-level frontogenesis bands, it is possible snow could fall at a decent clip for a time. The most likely timing for any of the transient uh, frontogenesis bands of heavier snow looks to be close to rush hour Tuesday morning. Even with temps near freezing and pavement temps initially above freezing, any of these transient bands of Beefier snow could result in some impacts on roadways, especially untreated bridges and overpasses. Going forecasts of generally up to an inch or so looks reasonable, with perhaps one to two inches over the northern Chicago suburbs by time this initial wave moves east of the area by midday Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon through Wednesday morning. So what we just pointed out is that the, although the computer models that we looked at were showing more, more rain than snow, but the National Weather Service is forecasting this to be a snow event. And the snow is expected to come down at uh, intense enough for it to accumulate despite the warmer roadways. Tuesday afternoon through Wednesday morning, while no meaningful, well-defined short waves are apparent in the model guidance in the wake of the initial trough Tuesday afternoon through Wednesday morning, our area will remain within the broad upper trough entrenched across the region. Forecast soundings depict moisture-rich steep lapse rates, so at least flurries and in all likelihood scattered snow showers will continue in the wake of the Monday night Tuesday morning snow. Given surface temps likely above freezing Tuesday afternoon and evening, expecting little or no accumulation. While cloud cover will hold temps up Tuesday night, they can get close to freezing and might allow for some minor accumulations on roads with any snow showers that linger into Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. In addition, setup remains quite favorable for lake effect, lake enhanced, lake effect late. It probably means to say lake. Uh, enhanced snow showers Tuesday afternoon through Wednesday morning. Initially, low-level flow would favor some of this lake-enhanced snow getting into northeast Illinois Tuesday afternoon and evening before low-level back sending the better lake effect potential into northwest Indiana Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Given the environmental steep lapse rates in place and lack of any appreciable inversion below the tropopause, conditions look to be quite unstable and favorable for lake effect, fairly strong and deep instability. Unstable conditions inland could allow for the lake-enhanced QPF footprint to potentially make it pretty for inland despite the weaker flow. Temps near the lake should stay just above freezing, limiting accumulation potential from lake effect. However, if any heavier lake effect snow showers penetrate farther inland, then there could be some minor additional accumulations from the lake, especially Tuesday night as temps drop a couple degrees. 
Wednesday afternoon and evening, guidance is in good agreement and bringing a fairly sharp mid-upper level trough across the region Wednesday in the afternoon. The already steep laps, low mid-level rates will steepen further with cold air advection aloft occurring as a pocket of 30 to 34 degrees below zero Celsius at 500 MB, it vex into the area. Given the prog moisture in place added forcing in very steep lapse rates environment would anticipate fairly widespread snow showers. Given the impressive prog convective instability, there could be some heavy snow showers. This is Wednesday afternoon. We'll need to watch for potential snow squall potential Wednesday afternoon, particularly in vicinity of inverted surface trough, prog to move across the area during the afternoon. Again, surface temps should be above freezing Wednesday afternoon, but the more intense snow showers would likely result in temperatures dropping to or just below freezing and could allow for some localized accumulations. Conditions look quite favorable for lake enhancement to the snow showers again during this period though initially that would likely be confined to over the lake and east of our county warning area. But as low-level flow veers, some of that lake-enhanced snow shower activity would likely make it into at least our northwest Indiana counties Wednesday night. Temperatures right near the lake may be just above freezing, possibly limiting accumulations a bit closer to the lake. Okay, now we go into Thursday onward. Should remain cloudy with some flurries potentially lingering Thursday morning. Later Thursday afternoon or Thursday night, medium-range guidance is in good agreement in sending a very impressive early-season dump of cold air into the region. Snow showers could accompany this next polar front followed by what looks to be near record cold air spilling into the area by Friday. If and where this is an snow cover and if skies clear out wouldn't rule out temperatures dropping into the single digits Thursday night and or Friday night away from the urban heat island. Best chance of clearing looks to be Friday night quite possible. Stratus could hang on Thursday night and keep temperatures warmer than currently forecasted. Friday looks to be quite cold with highs only in the 20s. The 12 Zulu European computer medium range forecast model has a reinforcing shot of cold air coming this weekend while the GFS would have a transition to more of a transitional to a zonal flow with moderating temps. At this distance, a lot could change, so saw no reason to stray from the NBM guidance, which has some slight moderate in temps, but still well below average this weekend. It brings the forecast discussion to an end. Here's the weather story from the National Weather Service. The storm tracking from the southern U.S. to the eastern U.S., we also have strong winds in Southern California. A, stro- a storm will develop over the Southern Plains Monday then shift to the Eastern Great Lakes before transferring off the coast of New England through Wednesday night. This will bring areas of rain, thunderstorms, snow, ice, and mixed precipitation. Strong offshore winds likely in Southern California Tuesday and Wednesday may cause some damage and power outages along with critical fire weather. To sum it all up, once again here for the Chicago area, we have a system, an organized system that's going to be moving through our area Monday night. The computer models show Tuesday morning and to Tuesday afternoon. The computer models show a lot of rain with the system, or at least in terms of the ratio, it's a light precipitation maker. But the computer models from windy.com indicate mostly rain, very little snow, but the National Weather Service uh, indicates snow. And the uh, warmer roadways will make it difficult for the snow to accumulate. But the snow may come down hard enough where it could overcome the warmer roadways, especially Tuesday morning. They're saying the rush hour commute could be impacted by this. We have another organized system coming through Wednesday, somewhat organized coming through Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday evening. That one also has some lake enhancement associated with it. There could be snow squalls. Once again, the computer models show more rain than snow for our area. The National Weather Service informs us that it's going to be an all-snow event. Once again, all-snow event. And in that system, the snow showers might not only be strong enough to overcome the warmer roadways, but also there might be enough what's called usually evaporative cooling, where the snow showers themselves will cause a drop in air temperatures. So temperatures might actually end up being cold enough Wednesday afternoon for a quick, these are minor accumulations, but it may come down quite quickly. Uh, We have another 
uh, a major front moving through on Thursday. There could be snow showers associated with the front. The right b- after fronts move through, Chicago has a tendency to see uh, some types of instability. So it would not be surprising to see some snow showers in the area on Friday. However, there are no forecasts which indicate such. The big story really is the change of weather pattern, the real cold weather this week especially after Monday's system moves through. But even before, slightly warmer on Monday. Temperatures upper 30s. National Weather Service says low 40s. And then we have cold weather the rest of the week with daytime highs in the 30s. And Monday, high, Friday's high temperatures only in the 20s. The National Weather Service has pointed out that we have a machlokus, a different approach between meter miles between the, uh, by the end of the weekend with the GFS model showing more of a... The zonal flow, but the European computer model showing a reinforcing shot of very cold air for next weekend. You have been listening to the podcast Weather with Enthusiasm.